Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the D-Line Show. Today, we are back at Orse. Last time we were here, the food was delicious. So I'm really excited about it. I know the guys are excited about eating here again. We got a lot of great topics today, a lot about family, uh, off the field issues, investments, everything like that. So I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. So let's get it. <laughs> LeBron ain't had no shot. No, no, no. You said he didn't drive. You said he didn't drive. Yeah, so he had to drive. He, he would have had to drive. He said he couldn't drive. And he wouldn't have been able to drive. No, don't would, change the subject. I said he would. I said with Carmelo. 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 I said that's like these motherfuckers love tapping you. What you mean? That's how much big man you do not fuck like that, bro. Boy, what? Boy, hey, bro, no, bro. The boys was big back then too, though. They was bigger back then. Yeah, but he big and fat. Right. They was like they would keep up with that man. I mean, he is. Just so like, just like when Grant Hill came to the league, I'm talking about the centers. Not the dudes going by. They don't know what they have. You don't got to remember, back then, the game that is spread the court. Nobody said threes like that. So the game was always packed. So you had to just, you know, you get physical. And he didn't got physical in that bitch. Now Jordan got in there, but Jordan had to do flashy shit. You know, man. Yeah, because back then, they was like, that's all he could do. Right, right. And he was like, shoot my size. He was like, 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 to 2016, bro. Did he fast? But he ran a 4 6 guy. He said he ran a 40, ran a 4 6. This is too. We talk about being physical in basketball. This man's 6 8 I'm not saying LeBron would be a great player in any era. LeBron would be a great player in any era. But it would be harder for him to get to the line. He had to get to the line and shoot free throws a lot. They was going to make him pay for the buckets back in Michael Jordan's era. Yeah. I understand that. His longevity would have been at risk. <laughs> nah. But as long as he done my plan, I mean, he would have had to spend three million dollars. He would develop a jump shot quicker though, because he can shoot now. But with yeah. only score, he can shoot. He, yeah. he can develop it quicker. He would have been, yeah. The reason yeah. why Jordan is a great shooter is because yeah. they used to foul the fuck out of him. Mm -hmm. Most dominant boxer, Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. You think Mike Tyson would be the uh, one hundred percent? Yes. Just because it was. It was, well, kind of it was a different. It was a different. It was a different era in boxing. He had, he had Wait, is he saying that? Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Muhammad Ali's style would not be compatible <laughs> with Mike Tyson. One hundred percent. Are you out your mind? He 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 it. I'm gonna get this response, which is fine. I completely you understand. You took his from heavy hitters. And you see where he I, is now. I completely nah, understand. Oh. nah. You see where he is. He took the bitch at forty-two. So and he didn't fight him when he was 22, he, he took the <coughs> bitch at 42. That's why he, he can't get fighting in his career. Which is fine. And he retired when he was 36 like he's supposed to. Actually speaking, he didn't be done. Mike he Tyson, came back and fought three Mike fights and fucked his head up. Mike would have killed his body. All that head with Mike would just kill him. you don't understand. Nobody could hit Muhammad Ali when he was in his prime. Yes, they could. Nobody could hit him. He didn't get touched. Yes, they could. Go back and look at his highlights. But before he went, before, before, he had to stop for not going all to the army. All the same. All the same. Before he had to stop before he went to the army. You said Mike Nobody Tyson touched him in the head. Mike Tyson touched him, boy. Nobody touched him. He, everybody missed him. No, not before, everybody. He, everybody Tyson, missed him bro, until Tyson, after he Tyson would have been hot with that boy. But, uh, Tyson would have been mad at him. You, you know what's history now? He would have had Tyson so yes. tired. Cause before he terrible. had to stop fighting, he had to give him his belt. His stamina was yes. terrible, bro. He would have had Tyson so tired, bro. Yeah, bro, Tyson. Because he, he, he definitely wasn't going to knock him out in the first he, he round. Was get he was not going to knock him out in the first round. You get past three rounds of Mike Tyson. 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 Mike Tyson
When you look at yes, if you look at the five versus uh, let's say Smokey Joe Frazier, right? Yeah, you talk about after when he came back, this bro. Is, this is after. Bad. This no, this is not before. He, he didn't fight Joe Frazier. He, he did not fight Joe Frazier until after the war stuff. Even then, he yeah. came back. Yo, when he came back, he didn't come back and say, "Okay, who, okay, if we're gonna do that." All right. Hi, I'm uh, Donald Dean. I am the chef de cuisine here at Restaurant Orse. I've uh, been here for about. Over 11 years now, sure, with our Orsay salad. It'll be uh, greens provided by Bacon Farms, along with some grape tomatoes, some onions, and our Dijon Champagne vinaigrette, a our pork chop with a fennel, Granny Smith apple cabbage, Palmery mustard cream sauce, and roasted fingerling potatoes, a ribeye, uh, prime ribeye, with heirloom carrots, Cipollini onions, roasted mushrooms, and fennel. Uh, for dessert, a creme brulee with fresh berries, a banana Foster's bread pudding, baguette provided by French Pantry, a bourbon banana creme anglaise, malted banana ice cream, spice whiskey caramel sauce. I've been working on it for a couple of years now. I've had Boston Land in North Carolina. I wanna fuck around with shipping containers and some, some me and my friend, we kinda got a play with cutter and start playing around and then we came into a hobby and we do pools and stuff out of it. Actually pretty cool. Make pools out of shit this guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the houses and uh, guest houses and stuff. But we on um, but in the mountains here we put it's on a tell on tell the dragon and we put them like cabins out of shipping containers up here though. So we just kinda of, been laying the land out and just kind of playing around with that for a little bit. Yeah, right now it's just a portfolio. I'm actually thinking about starting um, with a couple friends automotive shop in Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. Not performance shop, not just like a, you know. Garage. So, you know, we're working it out, trying to find a location. Um, but yeah, it would be a fun little project. Who are your friends? So, one of them works actually as a mechanic. Good friend. Uh, another one works as a, uh, he, he works transport for cars. Um, from from and two dealerships, you know, from the factory, um, and then one of them's a doctor. So I mean, it, what do you know, like is it like equal as far as uh, how much everybody's putting in? <clears throat> yes. Uh, so that would be like we would share a, like stake in the company, you know, uh, and then have a couple of employees. So we all have, you all have equal risks. Yes, one hundred percent. So it's not you know one's getting a bigger piece of the pie, you know, being put. Who, who's going to operate it? <sighs> We're gonna right now to be. Uh, a buddy of mine who's actually working in cars and modifying cars. We what think he's the best option for that type of. What, uh, what would be your role? For me right now, <coughs> initial investment, learning the trade. You know, Solid investment exactly. For now. So for now, investment. I, I know you know you need a certain amount of resources to start something up, and I think this is something I believe in. So you know. So you're gonna put most of the money here? No, <laughs> we will separate it three ways, and but you know it's a key piece to uh, to the puzzle. So. You know, either way it goes, it's so not right. So you really gonna be just you be an investor, a one third investor, no matter, but you won't have any. No matter what, what happens, I'm keeping my hands yeah. out of the operations just because. I mean, I'll participate, but as far as like, the, exactly as far as decisions, I trust that the people I'm working with are able to trust make that. Trust the big deal. one hundred percent. But in terms of profession, when you got people who've been working in this business longer than I've, you know, been oh, around it, I trust that they're able to oh, make. You know, right, right, right now, I just buy a lot of. I just buy a lot of land. Now, I mean, sometimes you want to do branding. You know, building on it. I just buy a lot of land. But I'm not doing business. I'm not doing business with anybody in the building. I don't want the jobs with the building. I don't want. I don't want any of my tenants to know my house. They said like hundred fifty, hundred fifty thousand dollar houses, hundred thousand dollar houses. Anything has entry level, entry level buyers, like first time buyers. A lot of first time buyers are buying that price. Yeah, there's a lot of niggas that actually come from. Yeah, so you building, you building a hundred thousand dollar house for forty to sixty k. You know what I mean? Yeah, the hell. Profit in the market where you know you get FDA loans and then you're getting all these yeah, type of loans, but first time home buyers have a lot of perks that can buy houses uh, yeah, yeah. for like a hundred grand. You know what I mean? So you're not really losing. How y'all able to balance family and career? I don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Clays. We want you two cents on this. Let's hear your insight. Oh, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I don't balance family and football. Yeah, it's Shit easy, man. I, I take care of football. 
And when football's <laughs> over, I go and spend time with my family. Hey, What's it, my brother? I feel yeah. like the outside world doesn't realize though, that you take football home. Football yeah. is a full time job, and it's it's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, my wife would give me a hard time. She said, "Yo, you doing homework?" But I study with a notebook, so I'm taking notes and stuff. And like, it ain't for that's clay one from you know, nobody. Sure. Nobody's gonna see it only me. But it's just the way I take notes. And she like, "You like you doing homework?" But I mean, I do take it home, and I got a balance. It is a balance of mm-hmm. making sure I give my wife a quality time. Make sure I get myself get from my mindset, maybe just get some away from everything. Yeah. Yeah. But also make sure I'm as prepared as I can be. It's just balance. And my, my thing is like a lot of a lot of like family members and shit like that be asking for money, be always in your ear and shit like that. Yeah, at the beginning, the your first couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Like that shit go away though, as long as you handle it right. Yeah, like, like, you know, when people about. really need something <laughs> and like I you know, and I and I fuck with them, like, you know, I know that's <laughs> but if somebody really needs something and like they like people like that. <laughs> help me get to a matter, help me keep my safety. For the most part, I'm gonna look out. But I try to look out, you know, uh, conservative uh, sometimes. Yeah, it's it's a hell of idea, but. Yeah. How do I juggle family? Football's football? a family. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's easy. I live by myself, so. My family's back home. I talk to them when they call me. Fair enough. It's easy. Even, even, that, even with friends and shit like that, so they don't, they don't be asking you, like, hey, can I come to a game? None of that shit. Uh, that's football friends. No, nah, people come to my games. Like, for instance, like my mom, she coming to the London game. But, you know, it's not like people always trying to bug my phone to try to come to a game like that. Anybody ever got mad at you because you know, they can't come to a game or, like, support you? No, nah, the only people that come to the games people that's close to me. Yeah. So, that ain't never been an issue. You get used to it. I, uh... Well, I wish we was playing. I've been doing that since <laughs> high school. Really. More at quarterback? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, <throat> when I moved over to Delaware, like, I was still like ball, being you know, a the family. family. Oh, and man, by, the, by the time I went to college, bro, I was they, got to they got something to prove. Yeah, it's like, tough. Yeah, it was they worse in college, college because too. you're on the other coast and you're, you know, you're in California, three hours behind. Um, well, he started before too. I mean, he conversations a little bit different. But you know, whenever you go to see family or go back home. It's, it's, it's that much more fulfilling. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, you feel that much better. Wasn't it on our practice squad or some shit? Like so, nah, yeah. I'm used to it. Not more. It's for good, too. You gotta watch the whole video, too. Uh, go ahead, man. That pitch is changing out. I was like, oh, lady, come here. Go ahead, Go ahead, Sam. I was disappointed they showed me this shit. White boy David. Jan. <laughs> Old man Calais. Sharpest hairline in the room. Crazy ass Lorente. He looks sleep over there. Pick your tongue up, son. Can't hear shit you say. Got Smoot down there. Hey Smoot, say hey to the TV. Hey Smoot. Oh, he, he's locked in right now. He's not gonna play. Big old Marcel. He's here. <laughs> this is our Canadian friend, Ely. Eh? Eh, Ely, eh? You were doing the dinner, eh? I was wondering, do you want to go moose hunting or. I was wondering if you wanted to go out to the woods. Hey, Ely, I heard a rumor that in Canada people keep their doors on lock. Um, yeah, in the suburban the neighborhoods only, though. Oh, so there's, there's a hood out there in Canada? I'm sure David can relate. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Orsay, Smoot, and Smoot TV. Uh, That's Smoot you know. TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's Smoot TV? I'll come over uh, and help you. All right. I'm a lie. Are you a man? I, I, yeah, I, I, I can be in it with you. You're having a Smoot? Oh, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I want to thank the cream brulee. That was really good. Is that the thing that it's like caramelized on top with the yeah. peanuts? Yeah, the cream brulee. That was really good here. 
Definitely recommend. Uh, that's pretty good too. I got the fish. Nah, I ain't, I ain't get the fish. The fish is really good. The fish is good. So yeah, keep, the fish is real good. So keep saying it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't even really know exactly what he said, but hey, I appreciate you, TB, for doing the outro. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to Amalive Media. We have some YouTube stuff there. Right there. Yeah, that's oh, pretty good, is, man. <laughs>